Hey everyone, James here again, uh, just bringing a little update to my purchases from Valley Village. I figured I would bring you guys in and let you see as I test the equipment out and we see how we made out. So as a quick uh, reminder and run through, we have a Sega Game Gear with four games. We have Sonic Labyrinth, we have Sonic 2, we have Taz in the Escape from Mars, and we have Monaco GP. In addition, we have a handy pack color for the Game Boy Color. And we have a link cable for the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy Advance with the adapter to connect it to the original Game Boy. So I think the adapters are pretty difficult to come by. Uh, it's the first time I've actually seen one in person. So, you know, at very least I got something that I certainly didn't have. Um, in addition, I don't have Sonic Labyrinth or the Taz games, so as long as they work, I've, I think, made out pretty successfully. But what I'm most interested in, obviously, is the Game Gear. Um, I have two, both of which need the cap kit, um, so we'll see if this one also needs the cap kit. I think pretty much all designs of the Game Gear eventually do need the cap kit, so we'll see where we're at with that. Um, so with me over here... I also have another Game Gear uh, for testing, just in case there's any question as to if there's problems with the cartridges or the system or whatever. Um, and I have a Game Boy Color to test out the Handy Pack with. So we should be able to switch to the overhead view and get started. I'm just going to clear the Game Toad off. I don't think we'll need that anymore. Go ahead and switch to the overhead view. And there we go. There's our overhead. So here's the Game Boy, or sorry, the Game Gear that I just picked up, and the games. Now I took a look at the cartridge or the power adapters that were in the case, and one was 4.5 volts and one was 6 volts. So neither of them were useful for either the Game Boy or the Game Gear. So it looks like more and more it's just a bunch of stuff that got tossed into the bag before they brought it to Value Village. So we'll start off by putting some batteries into the unit. Just enough batteries to equal the amount of power put out by the sun, so nothing too big there. Six double A's, which gave you a blistering, I, I don't know, about two and a half hours worth of gameplay, I think. There we go. We'll pick a game. I think we'll go with Sonic 2 because I already have two copies of it. So if something is wrong with this game gear and it ends up blowing the cartridge, well, I think I can live without a copy of Sonic 2. Moment of truth. Oh my. Uh, well, there is sound from the unit. Uh, that screen is not functional at all. There's no image on it. Oh, uh, maybe there's a little bit of one. Oh, there we go. There is a crack in the screen itself right across there. I'm just going to turn this down. Well, that's, that un that's unfortunate, a bit disappointing. Um, right across the, the glass of the screen, uh, underneath the piece, there's a crack right on the corner. Now, what's interesting... I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. Uh, I don't see any physical damage to the outside of the case. There's no weak spots or anything. I legitimately don't know how they managed to crack the screen without damaging the outside of the unit. I wonder if... Because uh, the backlight looks like it's bright, and the sound is good, which means the caps are so good. I wonder if somebody pulled this apart to do a cap kit on it and broke the screen and then basically just tossed it to... Uh, to Value Village. Well, that is too bad. Um, I think we can at least mark that copy of Sonic 2 working because, well, we could hear it. Now, this other Game Gear does need a cap kit, but the screen does work well enough for us to test stuff out, so we'll go ahead and swap our batteries over to here. That's too bad. I was, I mean, it was in the display case, so usually stuff in the display case is functional, but well, them's the brakes, I guess. But so far we have a working copy of Sonic 2, so I've made 
I don't know, maybe $5 back of the $25 that I spent. Helps if you put the battery compartments on the right side. Okay, and just to verify this one does in fact work, you should be able to see the screen at that weird angle there now. There's the Sega logo. And there's the Sonic logo. Okay, so we're good there. That works. Um, there's no sound on this because, as I was saying, it does need the cap kit, and the sound is usually the other thing that goes. Go ahead and put Sonic back in its case. Or a copy of Sonic back in the case. I guess that's not the new one. Super Monaco GP. There we go. Buyer licensed by Sega. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Okay, Super Monaco GP is also working as well as we can, as well as we can tell. I wonder if I'd have been better off uh, having sound but no screen versus screen but no sound. And again, product buyer for license, blah blah blah, Sega. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Keep getting the uh, buyer <laughs> buyer for licensed by Sega on the screen there. Oh, there we go. Looney Tunes, Taz in the Escape from Mars. There we go. It's pretty amazing. You get it right the the right angle, and it looks like it's not working too too bad. Okay, well that's a functioning copy of Taz. That's good. So the main console itself may be a bit of a lost. Co well, it'll be good for parts, anyways. I mean, obviously the main board still works on it. I might be able to uh, simply swap the screens between this one, and uh, that may be all it takes. <laughs> this is Sonic Labyrinth, and fires up right away, no problem. There's Sonic Labyrinth. Okay, so we have 4 for 4 on the games. Um, all that's left to test is the... Handy pack color, which I'm super thrilled about. Um, so this is an expansion module, uh, whatever you would call it, for the Game Boy Color. It replaces your directional pad with this stick. I keep wanting to call it an analog stick, but obviously you can't just put this over top of something that's digital and switch to analog. Um, the, I guess the most useful feature, I think, for me would be the fact that it gives you stereo speakers. So uh, the Game Boy is capable of outputting stereo, but only has a single mono speaker. And it gives you a magnifying glass that is pretty filthy, so I'll have to clean that, assuming this works. Uh, I didn't know if it was double A's or triple A's, so I brought both. It is triple A's. Now, if you have the battery pack for the Game Boy Color, or you have the um, power adapter, you can actually use, there's a pass-through cable that comes with it that uh, plugs into the corner here and splits the three volts from the power adapter or the battery pack to go from here or go into both here and the Game Boy Color. But if you don't have it, then you got to provide power to both separately. Uh, we should be able to just turn the light on here. And yeah, the, the light works and obviously the magnifying glass does. So the question will be whether or not the speakers work and we should have a complete unit if it does. So we'll go ahead and I guess this just snaps in there. The plastic's pretty fragile at this point. The stuff's uh, getting a little old and there's some stress lines. I don't know if the camera's picking that up here, but there's a little white line right there. 
or the plastic's a little stressed. So we won't be taking that on and off too many times, I can tell you that much. Um, need some batteries, and we'll go ahead and connect our headphones up here. And we'll see if Kirby's Dreamland turns into a nightmare with this accessory on it. There's our light. See the difference there? Maybe a little bit. Well, if it was a completely dark room, that would make a difference. We'll turn our speakers on, and there we go. Well, I can't see much through the glare of the camera, but that is working. Well, I can't see a thing, but it is bigger than it would be normally, so... Yeah, I think we can call that a uh, success, too. Let's go ahead and see. Uh, this might be a... There we go. There's our friend Kirby. And we can turn the light on, and we can turn the light off. It makes very little difference here. Um, but there's with the new speakers, and... Oh, well, that's quite quiet. Looks like the internal speaker on my Game Boy is blown. Well, I guess that accessory is going to be more useful than I thought it was. That's, uh, that's helpful. Okay, and that is it. That is the whole haul. So if uh, you liked this video, thumbs up. If uh, you have comments, by all means, toss them below. If you're new here, subscribe and click the bell so you get notified when I put out new content. Um, these Value Village things are going to be a bit sporadic, but I do try to get in at least once a week just to see if there's anything cool to grab. And until next time, stay creative.